Well, good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremt News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Whitney is off this evening. We start with a look at the weather and a look outside. Here's a live look at Riverfront Park tonight, where it is day three of Pig Out in the Park. And today turned out to be a good day to get out there and enjoy the festival. Let's start with getting right to meteorologist Michelle Boss, who is tracking even more sunshine as we head into the weekend. Michelle? Yeah, you may be wondering what to keep in your closet close at hand because you might have had to grab a sweater on Wednesday. Highs were in the low 60s, but now I'm saying put the sweater back. You can get the swimsuit back out at least for Saturday. As temperatures are going to be heating up and the sunshine is certainly back. Satellite and radar showing dry conditions all across the inland northwest. Just a few passing clouds moving through, but uh, the storm system to our south is actually pulling away. So things are going to stay dry at least for the first day of the three day holiday weekend. Currently temperatures pretty comfortable out there in the mid 70s in Spokane. Warmer in Deer Park at 78 and we're looking at 80s across much of central Washington. 80 in Lewiston, a little bit chillier there in Moscow, checking in at 60. Degrees, but the short term forecast keeps us mild and dry through the evening. Temperatures will finally slip into the 60s by 11 o'clock tonight and fall into the middle and upper 50s for lows. But tomorrow will be the hottest day of the three day weekend. We'll look at sunshine and mid 80s. A little bit cooler on Sunday because we're going to have a few more clouds. May have to dodge a sprinkler too. It does not look terribly wet, but a slight chance of showers in the forecast with a high of 80 and looking ahead to Memorial Day in the 70s with a slight chance of showers. All right, sounds good, Michelle. Thank you very much. Well, tonight we are getting a look at some terrifying moments inside the Oregon Road fire. A Spokane County Sheriff's deputy unknowingly filmed his flight through the firestorm. Crim 2 Shannon Mowdy has that story tonight. August 18th, Spokane County Deputy Britton Morgan is pleading with a man to leave his home. Sir. Thick black smoke and flames. The beginnings of the Oregon Road fire fill the sky. Do you have a ride at least? While the man refuses to go, Deputy Morgan knows he has to. As he makes his way south on Jefferson Road, Morgan warns another deputy to get out. 13, come back down that road now. It's coming our way. Both deputies direct evacuees out of the area. Go, 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 go. With Deputy Morgan bringing up the end of the line of cars, heading into the firestorm. In this uncut video of the drive, you can see the walls of flame on both sides. Calls on Morgan's radio alert the fire has jumped the road in some spots. You're not getting me today, As Deputy Morgan navigates through the heat and smoke, guided by his partner's lights ahead. Where the Dave? I don't want to die in this. With debris hitting his patrol car. Sparks flying through the air with the roadway, a tunnel of forest turned inferno. Hurry up, Dave! Firefighters say this fire was driven on by 45 mile per hour winds, flames reaching more than 100 feet in the air. Deputy Morgan's body cam unknowingly capturing it all until they emerge on the other side. Holy, that was hairy. Where Deputy Morgan jumps back into protecting drivers, heading into the hell he just escaped. Uh uh, turn around. It's just one story out of this blaze that shows how neighbors helped neighbors and officers served. A story with a happy ending. The man Deputy Morgan left behind did make it out. Shannon Mowdy. I'm so glad you're okay. Prem 2 News. My goodness. All right, in tonight's top stories, for the first time, we are seeing the moments a float plane crashed near Whidbey Island last year, killing all 10 people on board, including Spokane civil rights activist Sandy Williams and her partner. New witness video shows the plane flying with what appears to be smoke coming out of the plane before it took a nosedive and then went into the water. The crash happened a year ago, this coming Monday. The plane was flying from San Juan Island to Renton when it crashed into Mutiny Bay. Today, the NTSB released 500 pages of new documents, everything from the float plane's maintenance records to witness statements, including the video of the crash. Data provided by the FAA shows the flight was uneventful until the last eight seconds when the plane abruptly pitched up and then went down. Well, today is the first day of high school football across the state, but 19 Riverside High School football players can't play in their opening game tonight because they missed practice due to the Oregon Road Fire. According to the high school, the players were declared ineligible to play tonight because they missed practices during those level three evacuations for the Elk Chatteroy area. Riverside High School was used as an evacuation center in the wake of the destructive fire. 
We have learned that the team did file an emergency appeal for the players with the Washington Interscholastic Activities Association, but that appeal was denied. During the game, Giza Credit Union and the Riverside School District will be collecting monetary donations for the victims of both the Oregon Road and Gray Fires. The game will still go on tonight with Riverside short players. Well, tonight the Pac-12 is down to the Pac-2. The Cougars will be one of two Pac-12 schools after the 2023-24 academic season. The University of California Berkeley and Stanford University are going to the Atlantic Coast Conference. The Huskies decided to lead the Pac-12 for the Big Ten starting in 2024, and that means WSU and Oregon State are all that is left. WSU released a statement in part saying, the departures from the Pac-12 by Stanford and California do not come as a surprise. They go on to state, we will continue to fight for Washington State as we explore all options to secure the best possible future for Cougar athletics, unquote. We have much more on the Pac-12 fallout on our streaming platform, Krem2+. Just navigate to Locked On Pac-12 section. Well, last night, the North Idaho Board of Trustees held another chaotic meeting. The 12 minute meeting discussed a potential seven figure settlement with a former employee. Trustees, though, would not reveal who that former employee was or why they are settling. But things got heated between trustees who disagreed about the settlement. I have a lot of problems with, with what you're putting forth here. Okay. You don't negotiate terms of a settlement for an accusation for something that is unfounded. We have an investigation underway. We don't have okay. so all of now this, you're going to interrupt me. I'm sorry. I'm all of this could have been said in executive session. It does session, not need so to be said in board. executive oh. session. I have every right and was elected to say it in open meeting. Well, the proposed settlement is starting at $1.3 million. The board passed a motion allowing the college's attorney to negotiate terms of the settlement under his direction. The entire board, though, will have a final say before any settlement is ultimately approved.